Welcome to my basic waves lesson. My name is Dominic McCamish, and I teach at McNabb Middle School in Mount Sterling, Kentucky, and we are a distinguished school. Uh, Alright, this is just going to be a basic overview of waves. We're going to talk about amplitude, uh, crest, trough, uh, the rest, so just basic different parts of waves. And then I'm going to show you how to use these three formulas to find velocity, the height of a wave, and the energy of a wave. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to tell you about is the rest. Usually, whenever you see a diagram of a wave, which is called a wave train, it has a line running through the middle. If this was a perfect diagram, then the line would be perfectly straight and it would be right in the middle. But of course, I'm not a perfect artist. So this line is called the rest. I like to think of it as the rest because if the wave starts to lose some of its energy, it's going to get smaller. And the less energy it uses, the farther it closes in, or it moves towards that middle line, and it's kind of like it's resting. The second part that I'm going to show you is the crest. The top of these little hills, that's the crest. And it's called the crest because of the crest of a hill, or the crest of the wave, is the very top of the hill or wave. Next is the trough. This is called a trough because it looks like a cross section of a trough that a horse would drink water out of or pigs would eat slop out of. They're usually uh, long and, well, they're shaped like this if you cut them in half and you look down it. Um, it holds the water or the slop or whatever it is. The next thing we're going to talk about is the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between two repeating spots on a wave. Now the two spots have to be exactly the same. So one way of finding the wavelength, and this is a very popular one, is by going from a crest to a crest or a trough to a trough. So I could say the distance from here to here, that would be a wavelength. And wavelength is represented by this symbol. It's not going to be perfect, but it's, it looks about like that. And I believe it's pronounced lambda. It's lambda is a Greek letter. And what you would do to find the actual wavelength, that's how you find it, or that's how you measure it, where you measure from, rather. You would actually take a ruler, and you would just measure that in centimeters. Remember that we use uh, the metric system in science all the time. So this would actually be about 20.5, oh no, let's say, yeah, 20 centimeters. Okay? So we're actually going to say the wavelength here is 20 centimeters. And I'll go ahead and write it up here as well. The next thing we're going to look at is the amplitude. The amplitude is the distance from the rest to the crest or the rest to the trough. Now, again, if this was a perfect diagram, a perfect wave train, then the rest, or the distance between the rest and the crest and the rest of the trough would be the same. But again, I'm not a very good artist. So I'm just going to pick the first one over here, and we're going to measure that. So you would find that distance from the rest to the top of the crest. Okay? And you would literally take a ruler, if you wanted to find that distance, and measure it in centimeters. Look, I didn't even make it straight up. But that's about 10 centimeters. So the amplitude is 10 centimeters. Oh, I forgot my units over here. All right. I'm going to back up a little bit now, and we're going to talk about finding how many waves in a wave train. This is important for finding frequency. Now, in my seventh grade class, our wave trains will pretty much always be one second. So this represents one second in time. I'm going to go ahead and write this over here. So the frequency is, of course, how many wavelengths pass a certain point in one second, okay? And if we're taking a snapshot of this one second, that means that however many wavelengths in, are in this wave train, that's how many are going to pass by in one second, okay? So how do you count the wavelengths? Well, we measured it by looking up here. But let's look at something. If I measure the wavelengths, okay, there's one, two, three, I left part of the wave off. 
I left off this part of the wave just completely, okay? And even this little part over here. So the way I like to measure these, and I'm gonna use a different color, is by making S's. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I would use a different color, even, even if I was working on a worksheet, I might take my pencil or a colored pencil or anything like that, and I would actually go along it and make a complete S. That's one wavelength, and I make little marks usually. That helps me out a lot. And now, the important thing, I stopped here instead of maybe over here or over here or even here, because you have to measure a wavelength from one point on a wave to its, its next repeating spot. Now, you might think that this first spot is the repeating spot, but the reason it's not, even though it's at the same height, is because here, the wave is going up, and here, the wave is going down. So you've got an up and a down. So that's not the same spot. You have to find the next part that crosses with the, the intersects with the rest that's going up. So we follow it, and look, it's going up and intersects with the rest. So that's one wavelength. Let's do it again for the second one. Two wavelengths. Three wavelengths. And four wavelengths. That's a different number than we would have gotten originally. At first, we would have gotten one, two, three wavelengths. But because we left off those other parts, we would have left off an entire wavelength. So, here, there are four wavelengths, or wave, wavelengths in this wave train. And since in, second, or in seventh grade in my class, all of our wave trains will be the time of one second, that means that our frequency is going to be four hertz. Now, frequency, of course, is represented by the Latin F. But when you talk about frequency, you don't just say it has a frequency of four, you say it has a frequency of four hertz. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and get into our first equation. That is velocity equals wavelength times frequency. So all you do is you take the wavelength, which is 20 centimeters, and multiply that by, by the frequency. So 4 times 20 is 80. So the velocity is going to be 80, but we have to give this a unit, right? We can't just say, well, it's going 80. So in this case, since we use centimeters, and it's going by seconds, that is 80 centimeters per second. Our next equation is going to be the height of the wave. Height of the wave literally goes, and remember that the original wave, by the way, is this in kind of the reddish pinkish color, not the green. So the height of the wave goes from the bottom of the wave to the top of the wave. So it's this distance between the bottom of the crest, or the bottom of the trough, I'm sorry, and the top of the crest. It doesn't go diagonally. That would be a different distance. It's just the distance between these two points. So how do we find that? It says it's two times the amplitude. All right, so all you have to do is take the amplitude, 10 centimeters, and multiply it by two. Again, if this was a perfect drawing, these would all be the same amplitude. They would be the same distance between the rest and the crest, or the rest and the trough. So you can see that the total height would just be two amplitudes. So the height would equal, of course, 20 centimeters. That's a different color, but that's all right. And finally, our last equation will be energy. How do we find the energy of the wave? Our standard says that we have to relate how, the veloc or how velocity and amplitude relate to the energy of a wave. So all you do is take um, amplitude and square it. Okay. So our amplitude here is 10 centimeters, right? If you square that, there's a couple ways to square it. You can put it in a calculator, and you can click on, or you can type in 10, 
and then hit the um, exponent button and click on 2 and that will square it or you can just do 10 times 10 because when you square something you multiply it by itself 10 times 10 of course is 100 so the energy of this would be 100 I'm just going to write it over here Okay, so we can actually, if we are given the height of the wave, we can find out what the amplitude is by doing the opposite of what we did to find out the height. If, we, if the height of the wave is 20, then all you have to do is do the opposite of this, which is division. So you would say, okay, 20 divided by 2 equals 10, and that would be right. The amplitude would be 10. You can also, if you're given the energy of a wave, you can find the amplitude by doing the square root, just which is the opposite of squaring. So you could say 10, find, or I'm sorry, find the square root of 100, and that would give you 10. That would give you the amplitude instead. So there are all kinds of things that you can do with, the, with these.